You're a fucking monster. You're a bitch. Yeah, I'm a fucking drama queen. I love the drama. You're a manipulative bitch and I'm done dealing with it. I said I was done opening my mouth as long as she shut her fucking mouth and she can't, which is funny because she doesn't want me to respond and she literally can't help herself from responding even though she's wrong. This is obviously not to say that I'm on the same level or of the same caliber as Quentin Tarantino, Ariana Grande, or Gordon Ramsay, but it does go to show that people will have differing opinions. And just because you like something that someone doesn't like or you don't like something that someone does like doesn't make it inherently good or bad. That is what art is, it's subjective. The other thing I will say before we properly get started is that poetry is completely subjective. While we can analyze it and say this is a good poem, this is a bad poem, they're kind of only from kind of technical perspectives. What you like and don't like is completely up to you and there's no right and wrong there at all. I truly don't get upset when people make fun of my music or my poetry because it's a matter of preference. What is it, you manipulative narcissistic bitch? That's art, baby! Hello, how's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Cam and if you're not new and you keep coming back again and again, thank you. I really appreciate you. Before we get into the video, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for supporting me. It's really appreciated. Patreon is pretty fun for me because I enjoy having a platform where numbers don't count <laughs> and also we have Zoom calls every month and stuff like that. So if you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's a link in the description below. And with that, let's get into the video. Lots of people know that I speak several languages because that's what I studied, but very few people actually know that what I studied was language and literature. I studied French and Russian, language and literature. And the reason that people don't know this is because I tend to avoid to talk about the literature part. And that's not because I don't like literature, I actually love literature. I really enjoyed it. It opened my horizons quite a bit. But the reason I don't really talk about that is because I don't feel that confident. I came from a background of studying maths and languages and I was very like analytical and very good with logic and numbers and stuff like that. But I wasn't in high school up until university. I wasn't really all that good at, you know, um, literature and just like philosophy or, or I didn't think I was at least. But then I went to study languages and literature and while that did open my mind in many ways because of that background I never really became all that confident with my abilities um, in literature. I did read a lot though and I uh, also wrote poetry. I have like a collection of poems of my own. I also wrote scripts and I turned them into films and in fact one um, of my films is something I called a poem, which is a film adaptation of a poem. I'll put a link here for you to watch if you like. It's very short, it's like 30 seconds long, go ahead and give it a watch, it's really cute. <laughs> if I should say so myself. But there is nothing like reading a bad book or a bad poem that makes me feel more confident in my abilities as a poet. Let me just give you a piece of example. This is a book, Dandelion by Gabby Hanna. I had this for a very long time, but I have not, I just didn't have time to read it and review it, but um, I am currently reading it and I will review it in my next video. Words. When I love someone, I love them forever. Both of us said it, neither of us meant it. Well, this is a uh, profound as hell. This isn't the topic of today's video because in today's video, I wanna tell you a story. This is the story of Gabby Hanna versus Rachel Oates, a story of ego trips, a story of drama, a story of never learning from one's mistakes, and a story of reheating old tea for no freaking reason. I'll try and take you behind the scenes of what a writer does. And before you even start writing your story, you need to come up with a few concepts in order for your story to be as good as possible. While writing is a creative endeavor, and there isn't a one size fits all, you, and there isn't a with certain type of book that works for everyone. Like there's a million genres out there. That you, I mean, not a million, but in general, every story tends to have a certain structure. And I've studied that structure at length. And the reason why most universities, uh, most courses in literature teach this specific tr structure is because it's one that has proven time and time again to work really, really well. Every story starts with an opener. 
And that opener has a very specific purpose and that purpose is to set the place, set the time and set the characters of the story to just kind of let people know what we're dealing with. Gabby Hanna vs. Rachel Oates starts once upon a time in 2017 and there are three locations. First location is on YouTube. Gabby Hanna and Rachel Oates are both YouTubers. The second location is the root of all evil, Twitter. And the third location is Instagram. And we're gonna get to that and I'm, gonna, I'm going to explain a little bit. Now getting to the part in where we look at the characters in our story, as with every fairy tale, let's say, maybe not every fairy tale, but fairy tales in general tend to have this villain, that would be Gabby Hanna, and you have a hero, that would be Rachel Oates. But we also have a tertiary character, the confidant, I will call him, and that would be Jimmy Snow. <laughs> Jimmy was Gabby Hanna's confidant in this story. And here's the inciting incident. Once upon a time in 2017, Gabby Hanna wrote a book called Adultolescence. Two years later, in 2019, Rachel Oates, a fellow YouTuber who critiques books and poems and a lot of other things on the internet, pretty much like me, but just much, much better. <laughs> she made a review of Gabby Hanna's book. Now, Gabby Hanna is a very dramatic person and she has a very big ego and didn't really like the fact that her book was being criticized, but I don't think that it was just that because lots and lots of people criticized her book. However, it, she only picked on Rachel Oates and that's because Rachel's critique was the one that gathered most attention and has over a million views. Then comes a series of crises that builds up tension and a lot of that has to do with Gabby Hanna being a drama queen, someone who has a big big ego and can't handle criticism, someone who also gets in a lot of drama on the internet and she fights with pretty much everyone because she just can't handle it. That makes things get a little bit worse each time <laughs> and it makes Gabby look a little worse every time. However, I am of the belief that Gabby is of the belief that any publicity is good publicity. I'm not of the belief that any publicity is good publicity. I think there's such thing as bad publicity and I think she's getting it. <laughs> and while I think that she's getting all this bad publicity, she does like the attention very much. And that, my friends, is the motive. Because Gabby Hanna wants attention. Gabby wants to stay relevant. Gabby is coming from the Vine era. She's one of the people like David Dobrik, you know, who just got cancelled because, well, I'm not going to get into that, but basically it's, it's just been brought to our attention that he's a piece of crap. So anyways, so Gabby comes from that group, from uh, the vlog squad with David Dobrik. So, you know, you can already tell Gabby did leave the vlog squad at one point. And when she did so, she lost a lot of relevance. She was no longer surrounded by the cool people that she was in vlogs with all the time. And that affected her confidence. And not only that, it also affected her numbers on YouTube. She never grew to the same level as David Dobrik, as Liza Koshy. Gabby became, was just kind of fading into irrelevance. And her way to deal with that was to start pushing out music, to start creating books of poetry. And fair enough, I think that actually experimenting and being creative is a great thing. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone who comes across your experimentation has to fall in love with it and has to like commend you for it. Once you are a public person, once you create a piece of art and you put it out in the open, it's up for criticism. It's up for being critiqued. You guys, this is actual basics. I don't even know why I'm saying this. I thought this is such obvious things. Like critiques have and reviews have been a part of literature and art forever. There's people who are paid for this. This is their job to do reviews, to do critiques. Why is, why is someone who's been on the internet like Gabby Hanna for so long, since freaking Vine, Vine is dead. And she's been around since Vine and yet she has not managed to grasp the concept of the fact that she can be criticized on the internet. That's just beyond me, but okay. Uh, the next step in a story structure tends to be the climax. In this story of Rachel versus Gabby, 
the climax just happened about three days ago, if I'm not mistaken. And that climax involves this confidant, Jimmy Snow. Here's what happened. Gabby decided to reheat some very, very old tea. And guess what? I live in Britain and tea is really, really bad when you reheat it. You should just make new tea or just give up on drinking that tea because reheated tea is absolutely disgusting and I'm not even joking about that. So the confidant, Jimmy Snow, this is a person who is kind of in the middle of this for no reason whatsoever. I have no receipts for you guys because everything, all the tweets have been deleted. But what happened is that Jimmy Snow, that, oh, sorry, what happened is that Rachel basically took to Twitter and she was uncomfortable with the fact that Jimmy Snow asked her not to release her critique of Gabby Hanna's new... Since adult lessons, Gabby Hanna has also come up with this book, Dandelion, that I bought, that I now, I'm not sure I should have spent my money on because, well, I just don't like to support people like Gabby Hanna. So, and I was um, planning to read it, but then I got busy. I never got around to it. And I now, I'm now, I'm now reading it and I'm not sure I should have spent my money on this. Before this book was released, Gabby sent a copy to um, Rachel Oates for review. Now this is uh, actually, it was quite an endearing moment. And I, I actually remember this. I was, I was following the story at the time. I was like, oh, that's actually nice. It means that Gabby finally realized that Rachel was just giving her feedback and it wasn't like bullying or whatever. And she got over that. And, you know, she grew as a person, she realized this, so, so she's now more confident as a writer and she's like, here's my new book, feel free to review it, I'll take the criticism. That's what I thought. And in fact, this is why I bought the book, because I knew that Gabby is problematic, but it was kind of an endearing moment because I was like, okay, well, yeah, you know, we all have been there. I've been there where I've been criticized on the internet and I lashed out in the comments and I'm not proud of it. Is that one of those moments where you just like cringe every time you think of, you know, when you just like, like a memory just pops up into your brain and you go like, oh, and I just, I cringe every time I think of how I handle that situation. And that's what I thought at the time that happened. I thought Gabby finally realized it was cringe of her to react the way she reacted to Rachel's criticism. <sighs> but my friends, no, no, she didn't come to any realization. She didn't grow. In fact, she got way worse, way more pathetic. But there's now a series of clips from her Instagram stories that are circulating the internet. Basically her just recanceling herself because she wants to be relevant once again. I wonder if she has another book coming out or something. Essentially, Gabby just goes in on Rachel. She's basically venting, but she's calling her a bitch. She's calling her abusive and manipulative and like all sorts of things. This is like honestly absolute cringe. Like this is the kind of thing you do even if you're mad about something or someone. This is the kind of thing you vent to your friends about. You don't go on the internet as a public person who makes their income from the internet. You don't do that like that. Like, it's just so bad. It's such a bad look for Gabby, honestly. Did I actually explain what happened there? Jimmy Snow is in the middle of this. So he appears to be friends with Gabby and friends with Rachel. And he uh, was probably talking to Gabby or something. And, and then he tried to persuade Rachel to not critique Gabby's book. And Rachel didn't feel comfortable with this. She posted about it. She didn't call him out. She just posted about it. But uh, he then, like Twitter is the root of all evil. Like I don't even know why people tweet. I don't even know what to tweet, to be honest. I do have a Twitter account. If you want to check it out, I'll just put it here. The most ridiculous part of all this is this is such old news. Like why are we even talking about this now? Adult Lessons came out in 2017. Rachel Oates's review came out in 2019 this came out in october i think of 2020 and we are now in april of 2021 why is gabby hanna still not over that somebody gave her a bad critique and she this is 
two years later, not, I don't know what month exactly Rachel Oates' critique came up, but let's say a year and a half later, and Gabby is still mad about that. Oh my God. <laughs> Honestly, like, how is this even possible? I highly doubt that Gabby is watching this video, but Gabby, if you're watching, move on. Okay, as a filmmaker myself, I, you don't always get good reviews and that's fair enough. Not everyone is like obliged to like your work. However, everyone is entitled to give their opinion on their work, especially if they spent money on it, if they bought it. They have the right to tell people how they feel about it. Why is this such a difficult concept for you, Gabby? Why? This isn't a personal thing. My God, by the way, guys, I am always, I've been a subscriber of Rachel Oates for two years, I would say. I like Rachel so much, and she's very clear about the fact that none of the videos that she makes are personal. She doesn't have a personal attachment to any of these things. She's just talking about things that are public, and she's giving her opinion. And Rachel is very, very well-educated, and she's very intelligent. And for some reason, Gabby has like gone on to um, insult her. Like She's just plain insulting her. And I just... It's just making me so uncomfortable watching Gabby's story um, because it's just, I don't think it's called for, but the thing is I, I kind of see it. I see what happened because Gabby is a freaking drama queen and Rachel touched the nerve because she was really good in her critique. She didn't just like go like, oh, I don't like this. Rachel is very well educated about poetry and she just like went in and discussed at length what are the uh, tropes that she was falling in and stuff like that and I think she really touched the nerve with Gabby because frankly Gabby's poetry is lazy. Gabby is lazy as a writer and I don't think she likes that people are aware of it now. You can tell with Rachel, I think Rachel has put a lot more work into her review than Gabby has put into the books because like I don't think I have the words to explain it, but it's just intuition. I guess it's just intuition, but I think that Gabby just really didn't put that much work into it. And I'm not talking about the books. The books are looking good. There's illustrations that are extremely beautiful. Um, everything like about the book itself is really well done, except the poetry, which was Gabby's job. Now, let me just like quote Rachel here and say that poetry is subjective. <laughs> and if I don't like it, doesn't mean that you won't like it. You might like it and very, very much. But the thing is, I, like I said, I write poetry too, or I used to write, but I put a lot of work into it. I wanted to make it sound good. I wanted to make sure that it expresses the feelings that I am trying to express, but not at the expense of the reader. I didn't want to give the reader a bad experience. Um, again, check the video that I've put in the cards above because you might get an idea. You might, you might think it's trash and feel free to let me know your opinion, whatever that is, good or bad. I am more than happy to receive criticism on my poetry as well. I'm not trying to say that I am a better writer than Gabby because our styles are very, very different. Her poetry is not like mine in any way. But what I do want to underline is the fact that I wrote this poetry in a different language and like it took me a long time to craft every single poem for that reason on top of the fact that I was writing a poem. And I'm not saying this to be like, oh, look at me, look how much better I am than Gabby. That's not my point, but my point is, I can tell when it's lazy, and this is lazy. My next video is a full review of this book because I really want to look at this book from all angles. I don't just want to criticize the bad in it. I also want to uh, tell you the poems that I do enjoy and why. But at the end of the day, um, I am really angry with Gabby right now <laughs> because I don't, like Rachel did not deserve, oh, okay, let's go back to the story structure, shall we? Because we have the end. Gabby Hannah taking to these stories, she tagged Rachel Oates. Gabby has like millions of subscribers and millions of followers and a lot of her audience are children. They're people who are young, very young, and they obviously love her, their favorite creator and they would want to protect her. So when Gabby is taking to Instagram to call Rachel all sorts of names, people are like, oh my God, Rachel has heard Gabby. And so basically what happened is they took to Instagram and they started to mass report um, Rachel's 
Instagram account and Rachel's Instagram account was taken down and Rachel has posted about it and she was really sad because she had a lot of pictures with Kyra. Kyra is her dog and Rachel has a very very strong bond with Kyra and she always talks about how much she loves her and I just think it's so so awful of Gabby to do that like it's such a low blow. Gabby has such a freaking fragile ego that two years after Rachel's review, Gabby is still hurt by that. Like, come on, girl. Fucking hell. That is so pathetic. But luckily, since then, Rachel's Instagram was reinstated and all is good. It's just so bad that she was put in this stressful situation by Gabby in the first place. What was the point of that? I really don't get it. And here's the thing. I think that anyone needs feedback and critiques. And I think people misunderstand. If people were to look at critiques and feedback in the way they should, they would actually benefit quite a bit in the long term because they would learn. Because you just learn how to be better if you look at it like that. But Gabby is clearly not doing that. And that's the sad part about this. Um, and because she's not trying to learn and she doesn't want to learn, she doesn't want to grow as a poet, she's now taking it out on Rachel. But in fact, if she was to look inwards, Gabby would realize that she's actually just mad at herself for being lazy with her poetry. But that's just my opinion. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh, stay tuned for my review of this. Bye. It sound right, boy.